Hey guys, welcome back to an interesting video on Wild Rift. So today we're back with a Zeri updated complete guide. And we haven't taken a look at Zeri in a very long while. I think since patch 5.1, we haven't really taken a look at Zeri at all. And um, yeah, so let's quickly just jump into the build real quick. So first up, we're going to start off with a Gladness Greaves for the um, AD and Omnivamp as usual. Then uh, also as usual, first item is going to be the Bloodthirster with the additional AD as well as the... Um, Nice stats, physical vamp, as well as the additional stats when you're high on health. And then we're going to go into the Slurry Charge Blade. Uh, we have covered this build before, but not for quite a long while. So Slurry Charge Blade gives you the extra um, attack speed, which is actually important here because we are not actually having Lethal Tempo or any other attack speed in our build. So attack speed here is really important. Crit, Ability Haste, but of course the most important part is the um, on-hit magic damage when you recast spells, which on Zeri is pretty common because you can, of course, just pop your... your um, your Q really often, um, and then after that, we're gonna go for the IE for the um, additional um, crit damage as well as the nice stats, and of course, a more reminder for the um, repent as well as the grievous wounds. And finally, to top it off, we're gonna go for a GA for the revive. Now, you can have an additional option as well here, um, off which is pretty popular now, which is going for if I can find it. Um, going for Novori Quick Blades um, over here, like this. As you can see, the top players, some of them are going for Novori Quick Blades, so you will have um, overcapped on crit, but the Quick Blades is very useful for getting your um, E cooldown a little bit more quickly. So for the runes, we're going to be going for um, Conqueror, because Conqueror is a rune you can stack up really quickly, unlike Lethal Temple, where you have to attack six times. But with the Conqueror, you are able to, of course, um, proc it really quickly with like an auto Q, auto E, things like that. You can stack it up really quickly. Of course, Brutal because you auto attack very often. Giant Slayer because it has the most value here. And uh, we have a Legend Alacrity here for the additional attack speed. Since we only have attack speed from Charge Blade, the extra attack speed here is very helpful. And here, of course, we go for Bone Plating um, just with the extra defensive stats. Of course, you could go for other options like Hex Flash and whatnot, but I think Bone Plating is generally the best. And here we go for Flash together with Ghost. Um, of course, you can also go for Exhaust in certain scenarios where, for example, you are against multiple assassins. But with all that said, let's jump into talking about our gameplay. Okay, so now hopping into the gameplay itself. Now, of course, as usual, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Any questions, queries, or remarks, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And of course, as usual, I'll be sure to address them. Now, also apologies if the audio seems weird because we are uh, on the move uh, at the moment. So we are recording um, using the AirPods instead of the actual professional mic uh, in, in this particular video. So um, there is that unfortunately. So anyways here, let's jump straight into the action. Thresh lands a hook onto Nami, we're against a Thresh and Tristana um, lane. Of course, Zeri generally prefers to be with an enchanter, uh, especially Yumi and Dulu, because she just wants to scale, get through the early game, get to the late game where she can really carry. However, unlike League PC, um, Zeri is not actually that weak in the early game. You can still do very decent trades in the early game with the help of your um, Q, which is really low cooldown, and you can hit multiple enemies at the same time with your Q, like I'm trying to do here, which I hit onto the Thresh. Um, so you really aren't as weak as the as the PC version of Zeri, but you aren't a, you aren't someone with a very strong early game either. So it is just pretty decent, like not the best, but not the worst either. Uh, and in certain matchups, you can bully, um, such as this. You can see that we are kind of relatively successfully bullying them. However, Tristana does get a very high bomb stack on me, so she does trade back pretty successfully. Um, and if I had like Exhaust or something like that, we would have won the trade pretty hard. Tristana and Thresh are really low getting poked by Nami. Tristana 1 HP now, gets bubbled, I flash over, and um, zap her with the Q for the kill. Now Thresh is really low, and here I use the E to shoot through the minions. Um, my Q kill is just coming up, so honestly I should have waited a second there to auto Q him under tower to get the kill. Um, so me and Nami are kind of really low as well. Here my W is actually coming up. So here I actually make a mistake there, because if I actually W through the tower properly, he would be forced to dodge back towards me, and then I can Q auto him for the kill. So again, I miss out on the opportunity to get the kill on him. So honestly, that's kind of on me. I kind of messed up there, um, not getting that kill when I really should have. Um, so a little bit of a missed opportunity there, but at the end of the day, we still have a kill, and the Tristana still died, so it's still a big win overall. Just that it could have been a little bit of a bigger win. Uh, which is, of course, what we always want. And now we're just going to reset, we get our Gluttonous Greaves, and now we're going to head back into the lane. So here they, they have pushed in the minion wave towards us, so we are just going to quickly clear it. Um, also, just 
talking a little bit about the build, there is a build variation that does involve going for Runan's Hurricane instead of going for uh, Slurry Charge Blade, but by and large, the Slurry Charge Blade build is simply just better, because it gives you a lot more additional burst damage, which in this current meta, it's all about the burst damage and just one-shotting people. Um, but there is also a world where uh, Runan's Hurricane build is going to be good, like if you have a very solid front line and you're playing front to back, the Runan's Hurricane build can uh, be way more insane than the Slurry Charge Blade build, uh, but of course, Runan's doesn't actually give you any crit on the second item, whereas Solari Charge Blade does, so that's another consideration. And of course, we're going to be talking um, about that build in a separate video, probably a supplementary guide that I will um, do eventually. I'm not sure when, but we'll have to we'll have to um, you know see uh, when I'm going to play that build and things like that. So here, once again, we're kind of back to just poking um, down the Thresh and the Tristana. Um, here we can see Pike, who is our jungler, has stealthed into the lane. Is pulling a hook, hooks Tristana, and Kane comes in for a gank at the same time. You get a really good ulti onto two. Tristana dies to Pike's Ignite, and now we're just running down Thresh, who has really nowhere to run. Um, the Pike takes the kill as well here, so Pike picks up a double, and now uh, we get to assist out uh, of the situation. However, we are going to be able to get some tower plates, which we will have to share uh, with Nami, and I believe the second plate here actually get, ends up getting shared with Pike as well. A little bit annoying there, but uh, at the end of the day, still a very successful play. Um, you know, Pike, by the way, the Pike doesn't even have Flash. He has taken Ignite and Smite, which is a really interesting um, loadout. And in the Champs like he was saying that he thought he was support, but he was actually jungle. So, yeah, I don't know how to feel about that. But anyways, here, we're now headed back to the lane. We have a really good, uh, like, close to 1k goal lead over the Tristana, considering that, you know, she did die twice. And, yeah, so here, Nami Wave comes in. I dash straight into Thresh's hook. Um, so it goes a little bit sideways, but we are still able to get a decent trade. Um, if I didn't dash um, straight into Thresh's hook, this probably could be a kill where I run down the Tristana. Either which way, I'm running down the Thresh instead. Very nice Nami bubble onto two. Here we finish off the Thresh, now focusing the Tristana. We finish her off as well. Uh, Kane actually ults me here, and I'm like 1 HP. Um, he looks like he's about to finish me off, but Nami hits the bubble, and I'm able to kite him out and pick up a triple kill, which is kind of insane here. Now, no idea how we won that 2v3, but if I was the enemy team now, I would be so uh, so tilted at this point. And uh, yeah, the situation is dire when the enemy ADC gets a triple kill, 2v3. Um, but anyways, here we reset, we complete our first item, the BT. And yeah, I mean, I'm 4 0 and 2 now, and Tristana is 0 and 3, Thresh is 0 and 2, and yeah, it's kind of just a disaster situation for them um, at the moment. Um, the good news for them is that Kane did have form, did get form off of that, and he got it before um, the Dragon and Herald spawn, so he will be really strong for the objectives. Uh, and you know, the Kane, you know, did die for the four, but you know, that's kind of fine in my book. So here, Tristana is taking a bunch of damage from me, has to respect my damage and has to back off. It, in fact, if I, think, I think that if Thresh actually engages here onto me, I think that they die instead because they are so far behind and the item diff is just so great um, that I actually think we kill them. So here, um, you know, with our huge lead, we are just going to force the tower. The enemy team did get the Rift Herald, but you can see we have such a huge lead that we actually secure the first tower before Kane is even able to put down the Herald. So here the dragon is up, and ideally we want to, you know, look to do the dragon, of course, because, you know, we are very strong and we are looking to fight uh, with our team. The herald is popped in the mid lane and does take down the tower, unfortunately, for us. So, um, so, yeah. Um, and here we are, we are in a fight here, uh, in the, in the dragon. So here Akali hits an E onto us, and the Akali damage is insane, pretty much almost one shots me, and the one last auto is going to finish the job, Akali picks up the shutdown, she is now 3 and 0, uh, 1 HP is the Akali now, Pike kills her and goes on a rampage, but Tristana uh, shuts down the Pike, as Pike shuts down the Akali at the same time, so Tristana kind of getting a little bit back in the game with that shutdown there, and Aronectum is 4 and 2 with the Bork first item in tow, and is... Um, you know, kind of cleaning house here, goes for the flash um, flash E into the cube to probably PTA. Um, and yeah, so now my team is demolishing the mid tower in the meanwhile. Um, here I'm pinging to defend bot tower, but Pike shouldn't be the one going to defend the bot tower. It should really be like Renekton uh, or or maybe even a soul going there to defend. Because here you can see I'm starting out the dragon, and I realize, wait a minute, my Pike is busy clearing wave at the other side of the map, so I can't be doing the dragon. So here... Um, Thresh is trying to find a pig. Actually hooks me past the Renekton, um, but nothing too much really comes of it because there isn't really enough follow-up for him. Pike just 
uh, swims his way past the Thresh, hooks down, took the Thresh. Akali pretty much one shots him, goes for the ulti, but gets chain CC by Nami and Renekton, so I'm able to finish um, her off with just a little bit of my damage. Um, so this time we survived the Akali encounter, and it's pretty apparent at this point that Akali is the main problem. Um, of course, Kane is a problem as well, uh, but not nearly as big as the Akali. Here we try to get the Dragon uh, Steel, but unfortunately doesn't really work out because um, we don't have enough time to kill the Kane to remove the Smite. Um, so the enemy team does end up securing the Dragon, but we are still in a very tremendous spot. Um, just pushing in the the uh, mid lane here at this point, and uh, I'm gonna see if we can siege onto this mid lane tower. Now it's a little bit dangerous because Thresh is here, and like they uh, they have four members here to protect the tower, including the Akali. Kane runs in uh, from the side, but doesn't you know really mess with us. So here we are probably gonna look for a reset here. Um, don't want to overstay uh, our welcome after getting a bunch of kills. We want to reset and spend the gold, so we're gonna quickly go back here, pick up the the cloak, of course, building towards the charge blade. And we are still in a relatively fine spot. Now our team is doing pretty well. Renekton, you can see, is really fed, so am I. And um, Pike is doing really well as well. Aesol is the only one kind of a little bit um, behind his counterpart, Akali. Uh, so yeah, the main challenge of the match is going to be Akali. Speak of the devil, here she is, trying to push in the wave. So I know I can't really step up too far, but at the same time, I don't want to do nothing. So using my range, I can indeed, um, you know, poke her down a little bit. I don't want to go anywhere near that minion, because obviously she's going to, you know, take the E and, and uh, you know, deal damage to me. Now here, somebody popped the Squire's Bloom. So here we can see that it's the Riven. So I immediately back off from the tower because I can't defend the tower 1v2. I can easily get dive by the two of them. Uh, in the meanwhile, my team is, you know, killing the enemy bottling once again. So I don't really want to, to you know, give the enemy team a kill for no reason when I know I cannot defend the tower. So instead of trying to even clear the wave, I'm just going to back. And why is that the case? Well, it's basically because I can complete my story charge blade here. So there's no need to get an extra 1 or 2 minions um, worth of gold anyway. I, I'm just going to back, complete my item, and go back and deal with the wave. Now here, for some reason, even though we just saw Akali pushing in this wave with Riven, my team decides to walk straight into the river where the Akali went. So... Both Aesol and Pike end up dying to the Akali, which was completely needless. I mean, you you literally just saw Akali push in the wave, and she had the reset up in the lane, or she went into the river. There's only these two possibilities. So I wouldn't be running blind into the river where there's no vision at all, when we know there's a fed Akali that might be there. So now we have a 6-2-1 Akali, who has um, nearly the most gold in the game, second only to Renekton, and we're going to have to deal with her. So you can see her Akali is on the chase, hits the E onto me, and immediately just one-shots me with, with just one combo. Uh, and yeah, you know, we're all suffering the consequences of the Akali being fed. Pike barely survives on 1 HP, uses the Great Health to kind of heal um, back up. And only Pike and Renekton are left alive. The rest of us do end up going down, uh, which is no good at all. So the game still is pretty competitive. You can see Renekton is super fed, but Akali is close behind. And Riven is just about as fed as me, despite the fact that she's 2, 5, and 2. She is still um, has still has a lot of gold and still has two complete items, same as myself. So the game is far from over. Uh, my team, in fact, only has like a two k goal lead against the enemy team, which is definitely not an in insurmountable um, lead whatsoever. It is just a honestly pretty slight lead. Um, here I'm trying to help Pipe with the, the red buff, but he he hooks it out of the range. Thankfully, he doesn't actually reset. Um, so while he's doing the red buff, I'm gonna quickly do the the uh, crux to just uh, secure some goal. Um, and we get the red buff share after he finishes taking it. So here, Renekton looked like he was in trouble being in a 1v2 versus Akali and Kane, but in reality, they were the ones in trouble and he kills them. So here we're just dashing in, uh, ulti onto the, the Thresh, but we're not able to, to really chase Tristana because she's a little bit too mobile and she also has the Buster shot to disengage, so not too much we can do here. Now, Riven's trying to push in the bot lane, but Renekton is there ready to stop her, so only Tristana is left to really defend the mid lane. We're just going to keep on pushing. Both the objective, Baron and Dragon, is going to spawn in like 30 seconds or so, so we're just going to keep on pushing and keeping up the mid lane pressure. Our last minion is about to die, though. Akali is now alive. I'm just going to quickly hop the wall before she can engage on me. Nami gets hit by the Akali. Um, e and does promptly go down. Now Pike nearly dies to Tristana, but the Grey Health is enough to actually regen and save him. Now I'm running for the hills so that I don't get one shot by either Kane or Akali. However, can't say the same for Aesol, who gets hit by every bit of Thresh's CC and does end up going down, um, you know, pretty quickly, to be honest. So now, 
Um, since my team is basically dead and we can't really contest this dragon anyways, I'm actually just going to reset, pick up um, some items. Pike looks like he is interested in trying to look for a steal, uh, but that's pretty much all he can really try. I mean, the team isn't really there to back him up, so he doesn't even actually go for the steal eventually. He just goes back to farm the wave, which is, you know, nothing uh, nothing wrong with that. Um, in the meanwhile, I'm just farming the, the um, jungle since he's farming the wave, just to, you know, Continue getting gold. We go to top, pick up another uh, another bunch of gold from these minions. Uh, Kane is aggroing the Grom, so we know he might be in the area. So I'm using my W to check if he's there. It turns out he's actually not. So now, we're just going to clear the Grom ourselves, and you know continue accruing our gold. Uh, of course, when we get IE, it's going to be a pretty huge spike with that IE uh, purchase. So. Um, Puts us to 75% crit, gives us all that good stats, you know, um, etc. So here looks like a fight is about to break out now. I'm just trying to chase in. Riven is on the back line, I'm trying to go on top of, um, you know, the rest of us. So I'm just trying to kite her out. The death stats is really putting in a lot of work to stop the damage from going through, but she does eventually end up going down. I'm popping the ghost here to chase in. Akali goes in, um, gets uh, gets the assassination, and eventually does die to Renekton, but I, I have to like pretty much run away from the fight so I don't get bursted by Akali. Healing out for the minions just a little bit. Now we're going to help our team pick up the Baron. Tristana is the only one alive, but you know I am I am pretty low uh, personally, and Pike is pretty low as well. So this is still mildly risky because Tristana could come and get a bunch of resets and maybe turn the tide of um, you know what's going on here, but thankfully she doesn't even try, so we end up getting out with a uh, relatively free Baron. Or not even relatively free, but literally a free Baron. And now with the Baron buff, we can look to continue to push. Um, no in hips have really been secured yet at this point. Uh, I'm once again going to help Pike quickly pick up the rip buff, and then I'm going to go to bot to push the bot wave most likely. There we go. So we're on the way to bot to push in the bot wave now. Pike and Nami have gone mid. And Renekton and Aurelian Soul are kind of resetting at the moment. So I'm looking to actually join my team here. Because um, I think that the fight's most likely to break out in the mid lane, as it always does, and it does indeed kind of um, break out into a mini skirmish between Riven and the Pike and Nami. Uh, but nothing too much really comes of it. Now, my team is now 5 men strong, um, or not 5 men strong, 4 men strong pushing in mid lane. Renekton is on his way to top, um, and yeah, fight ends up breaking out, and basically, um, you know, we end up just DPSing and, you know, just killing a bunch of people. Renekton is on his way to join the fight. Akali jumps in, uh, but Aesol has stasis, so um, he is going to be fine. We're able to finish off this final, uh, not final, but the first inhibitor tower. And so of weird interaction with Zeri is that if she attacks the base, she actually steals the base shield. So I actually get a pretty nice shield here because I was attacking the Nexus when the Nexus had the Nexus shield. So Akali gets hooked in here, nearly gets one shot, has to pop the stasis. And, and uh, in return, Kane is just going to get one shot instead because he becomes the target. Tristana dies as well. Akali is the last person standing, but we're going to be able to finish the game here. So I'm going to leave you guys with the stats as usual. Thank you guys so much for watching the video and bye.